How's it going, Bladesters? We're going to bring you specifications you can relate to so you can have an educated decision on your purchases. This is one from Kubi. Uh, so this is the second Kubi that I've been able to handle. So uh, it's, this one's a little bit uh, more to my liking uh, than the previous one. Uh, but uh, I'll talk to you through some of this one here. This one's the KB239. Uh, this is called the Drake. Uh, this one is from a designer, uh, Maxime Kaichuk. I uh, might have that close. I tried to Google it to try and figure out how to pronounce it. Uh, but that's the designer for this knife. Now, so he has a, a few other ones that are out there as well. Uh, but this is going to be how it looks in your pocket. And then we'll kind of go from there as far as this knife goes. Uh, this one has, uh, for the cutting edge on it, it's a pretty decent. It's like a 3.44 inch uh, cutting edge. And then basically you know, how that's uh, determined it's kind of just rocking it on a piece of um, something. Uh, so basically, rock it forward uh, from the back to the front, and then that's going to be the cutting edge of the knife. Uh, so that's where it's not uh, straight across, because sometimes you could have a really long belly or uh, something that's really distinct, and you're going to get more cutting edge on that uh, than a straight across, uh, like a worn cliff or something. Uh, so that's going to be um, how that's measured uh, for the channel. Uh, but this is going to be how it looks here. Sorry, it's got a little bit of fingerprints on there. Uh, this kind of bead, bead blast finish uh, for this knife here. But you can kind of see as far as what it's going to look like uh, in your hand as well. So this is in the description of the video. So you can actually print this out if you'd like. Uh, but basically for adult women's hand. So you can see that it kind of uh, goes over uh, that full length all the way up to extra large. And then for adult male's hand as well. And so you're still going to have a basic room, uh, at least in glove sizing uh, chart, to be able to fit for that. So that's going to be how that looks there. Uh, you do have the maker's mark on the knife too. If you might be able to see that, might not be able to, but so that's going to be his maker's mark there. So you'll find that on some other knives um, as well. Uh, but this is going to be one that comes in for weight wise. Uh, this is going to be at 4.8 ounces. Uh, so for this channel, as far as the measurement for weight, uh, so that translates over so you can pick up this item and then you can kind of get an idea as far as how much it weighs in hand. So that's going to be 4.8 ounces. So that's going to be 24 quarters. Uh, so if you have those around or if you want to pick them up. Uh, so when you're watching the channel, uh, that's going to be kind of the weight measurement that I'll go with. So you can kind of get that in hand and kind of see, well, what does actually 4.8 ounces feel like? And it is a little bit different because in some knives that are well balanced, it might feel lighter than it actually is. Uh, but that's going to be kind of a difference there. Uh, price point on this knife. Uh, so this specific one is going to be about $99 uh, for it. Uh, but then uh, it ranges anywhere from $59 all the way up to $259 and then the highest end one is going to be titanium and M390 uh, the rest are going to be in an OS 10 so that's going to be the difference for that uh, this one has a, a few different deployment methods uh, it does have the basically the light switch uh, method for it uh, it does have a middle finger uh, deployment it's a little bit smaller um, placement for it so it um, kind of takes a little bit of just shoving your finger in there to get that going and then uh, thumb isn't really able to do that because you have to get it at such an odd angle to get in there so you could if you really want to but it's really not um, meant for that uh, pinch and roll is going to be available so you just pinch it open roll it over uh, inertia also opens up so if you do uh, inertia flip uh, so it's not gravity because I'm basically multiplying gravity by actually flipping it down and stopping at it with a flick uh, so that's going to be where that's going to open up so I don't find that to be a downside, it's just something that happens. I mean, if I held the blade like this and it popped open on me, that would be more of a concern than doing an inertia flip for it. Traditional is also available, so just grabbing it two hands and opening it up. It's a large knife, so um, no matter if you do it that way or not, uh, you'll probably scare some people that are afraid of like itty bitty tiny little, like, I don't know, the Swiss Army knife or something. But uh, this one comes in at uh, 3.8 inches. Uh, for the actual blade. So that's going to be 3.8 from here uh, to the closest point on the handle. Uh, so that's going to be uh, basically from uh, this point there all the way to this most forward section of that handle uh, for that. So 3.8. Uh, reverse Tanto. Uh, there's a flat grind uh, on it. And then sorry, that is pretty dirty. So there's a bit of fingerprints on that, but so that's going to be that 3.8 ounces or 3.8 inches flat grind 
OS 10. So OS 10 is uh, basically transfers over to probably about a 440C. Uh, corrosion resistance side is going to be about 25th percentile. Edge retention side is going to be about 36th percentile uh, for it. And then the actual handle uh, length is going to be about uh, 4.8 inches. Uh, so it has a carbon fiber for it. And that's one thing I actually do like about this one. Uh, the designer, uh, Maxime, did, at least it seems like he did a lot of um, effort to actually make all these contours actually be of purpose. Uh, so even for this one in the back, uh, that's kind of that smaller contour right here. Uh, when you're actually pulling it out of your pocket, so uh, there's, right now it's set up in uh, right hand tip up, which it only is, because you can't flip that around. Uh, but uh, that little section, when you're pulling it out of your pocket, your thumb goes into that indent, uh, so it actually is a good place to hold it, uh, as well as uh, for the your finger location on these front sides. So it is done extremely well. I do like uh, what it how it came out. Uh, for this blade. It is not very distinct looking. It is something that um, does stand out uh, quite a bit, uh, but I like it uh, for those things. Uh, but this one, beyond its thickness on this one's about five sheets of paper. So take that out of your printer and you'll be about five sheets of paper. I measure it normally um, at the belly of the blade, unless it's a tanto, then I'll measure it here as well as that front uh, section uh, for the blade. Uh, so that's about 20 thousandths uh, degree of ramp. Uh, so that one's going to be just basically from uh, the release to when that um, that detent ball is completely on the blade. And this one is only at uh, about 18 degrees. So I find that 20 degrees is really good. 30 degrees is okay. 40 degrees and more, that's a bit much. And uh, probably, I just I just don't enjoy it too much at, at that level. Uh, so uh, this one also uh, is going to be um, about blade uh, stock thickness, about 2.96. Uh, millimeters that's about 117 thousandths uh, for it uh, and again only right hand tip up for this one uh, there's some things about it so as I talk through some of the good things about the knife uh, there's some things that I, I would like to see improve on it um, and then so we'll look into that right after we uh, do some comparisons as sizing so kind of the basics is rat number two so it's going to be quite a bit bigger than the rat two I still haven't cleaned that blade yet and then you have the uh, bug out so that's going to be those standards for that and then it kind of remind me of just because it's a carbon fiber blade and about the same size uh, it's not by the same blade or anything like that uh, but a ch knife there's a 3510 so this is one that i i've kept around for a while now i think it's probably about a two-year-old knife uh, but i still like it as far as blade shape carbon fiber has done really well on it too uh, for ch so that's going to be that one there. So as far as what I don't um, like about the knife, so this is a liner lock knife. Uh, most liner locks are uh, inherently, most of them uh, have a little bit lighter, uh, basically the liner lock tension. Uh, this just feels a little bit less uh, refined. Uh, so everything else is good on it. Uh, so as far as the way that's done, so it has the a titanium pocket clip, all the milling, all the rounding of the handles um, for the carbon fiber is really good. Uh, you have the nut colored backspacer um, as well. Uh, so it has a lot of pops of things. It does have that milled uh, pivot, uh, which is uh, kind of what they're going with right now. Uh, so all those things work really well, except uh, for uh, that uh, liner lock. So the liner lock feels uh, like an old lock. Uh, so as, as I handled a few other ones, uh, it just, the tension on it is a little bit uh, higher than I would prefer. Uh, so that comes down to preference. Uh, is it going to affect the way it works? No, it actually probably with a higher lock bar tension, you're going to have a little bit better lockup because, I mean, this isn't going anywhere. So up and down, left and right, it's good, solid. Uh, but just for me, uh, just for uh, regular use, uh, it just doesn't work very well for that. Uh, for cutting wise, I mean, it's a very good cutter. Uh, so this one actually goes through things very well. So it, it cuts well. Uh, so even for the degree of angle when going into boxes and everything else. So, I mean, if you have a box and then you're going to be cutting through uh, into like the tape and everything else, you're going to have basically this whole section to work with. You have the tip right there. Uh, so I found that it worked really well uh, for regular use. And my regular use isn't going to be uh, cutting down trees. I'm not going to be um, working on things really heavy. 
uh, but it cuts really well it does really well for it um, I never use lanyard holds but it is something that's there for you if you actually do like a lanyard uh, that is something that's available for you uh, but uh, this one also seems to have T8 all the, way, all the way around so I did not disassemble it but it does so it has T8 all the way around so that's something that uh, some people look for uh, in a knife especially the ones that you're going to be taking apart uh, so that's something that uh, is to note on this as well so T8 uh, for the hardware so for buy, borrow, avoid, uh, this is where it comes into kind of the in-between of buy and borrow. So um, I'm kind of in-between this. So I'm not an excellent, like a definitely buy, but I'm not a uh, definite borrow. So I'm kind of in the middle because um, for the most part, it's a very usable knife. I like how it's done. I like it better than the dandy that I handled from Kubi. Uh, but it just seems it needs a little bit more polish to it. And just um, if they had got that lock bar tension uh, down a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit thinner, so even looking at like the CH knife that's two years old, uh, I guess in comparison to this one, as far as even those liners, uh, this one's quite a bit thinner as far as the liner. Uh, it also has a little bit um, a less tension to it. So it just feels a little bit more polished and more refined uh, than the other one. And then it's still locked up really well. So if you get the geometry down on it, uh, those lock faces um, cut at the right angles and it, um, making contact in the right place, uh, you'll be perfectly fine with that so you don't need to have a high lock bar tension and then even for the actual lockup on it uh, this one is probably going to be uh, somewhere around uh, seven maybe about 60 percent uh, right now and that's going off of where this bar is compared to the actual lock face uh, so but that's going to be what it looks like and everything else uh, so more impressed with this one as far as kubi goes but that's about all i have to say about that one today